question number mathematics teacher at Kennedy Secondary School. Today I want to discuss with you how to obtain special matrices of reflection under given conditions. Now, any reflection under transformations occurs, occurs only when we have a mirror line terminology is a mirror line but this mirror line is always of the form y equal to mx plus c with a gradient m and intercept c uh, it's in a straight line however the idea is we borrow some little concepts from physics where we say if this is the object if this is the object, then its distance from the mirror, if known, and this object is to be reflected in this mirror. The grisly surface shows you the, side, the shiny surface. The shiny surface is this, implying this object will be reflected in this mirror, and it will appear to the observer who is the object as if his image is behind the mirror. However, my interest is the distance of this object behind the mirror must be the same as it is from the mirror. So its image will be uh, will be behind the mirror, will be behind the mirror. But the distance of the image will also be d. Point of emphasis: the distance of the object from the mirror is equal to the distance of the image behind the mirror. I emphasize distance of the object from the mirror is the same distance of the image behind the mirror. Very important. Uh, we have four standard mirror lines. Four standard mirror lines. Four standard mirror lines. We have four standard mirror lines of reflection. We have four standard mirror lines of reflection. That is to say, that is to say, the line y equal to zero, the line x equal to zero, the line y equal to x, and the line y equal to negative x. The line y equal to zero is the x-axis, the line x equal to zero is the y-axis, then this line can also be denoted as x minus y equal to 0. And this one can also be denoted as x plus y equal to 0. In this situation, I've brought y to the right hand side. In this situation, I've taken x to the left hand side. Now, each of these lines has a specific matrix of reflection and a calculations of special matrices. Each line has its own matrix of reflection. Each line has its own matrix of reflection. As we are going to feed in, as we are going to feed in under guided conditions. Now, how do we get these special matrices of reflection? We apply what I would call a unit squared. We apply what I would call a unit square. A unit square of I uh, 1 0 and J coordinates 0 1 as you have them in your notes. These are the standard object points. I mentioned them as standard object points. They help us to uh, confirm that the reflection has occurred through the right mirror and using the right positions. However, to demonstrate this, this unit square, this is why we call it a unit square, it's because one of its coordinates is at the origin, then one other coordinate occurs at one, dis one unit distance, one unit distance from the object, and then one other unit occurs one unit distance from the, uh, the origin upwards, this is J, from the origin to the right, this is I. One unit, one unit. That's why it's called a unit square. And when you try to connect these ones, 
you come up with a square unit square one unit one unit meaning this is one and this is one however we use those two points of the unit square which are on the coordinate axis separately so for any line this become the objects i emphasize for any line i and j are referred to as the coordinate the objects this is one zero and this is zero one they are referred to as the objects so when you reflect i in your mirror and you reflect j also in your mirror the object i its image will be i prime the object j its image will be j prime now the matrix due to i prime and j prime becomes the special matrix of reflection remember we are using i and j as object matrices that implies that if I consider I and J as object points in their matrix, that will be the matrix of objects. But when I'm writing a matrix of reflection for a specific mirror line, I'll write the matrix of the image. So the object matrix is I, J. But the image matrix for a specific line will constitute I prime and J prime for that specific mirror line. I emphasize. So let's begin. This is the idea you need to answer in a question. The rest of the story remains the same. The rest of the story, dear students, remains the same. We will just multiply. The moment you are able to get the matrix, please just multiply. Matrix of reflection times the object matrix reach the image. Now, for example, let me demonstrate. Uh, suppose the mirror line, consider the situation when the mirror line is y equal to 0. Remember y equal to 0 is the x-axis. Remember y equal to 0 is the x-axis. So when we are to reflect it, when we are to reflect it, uh, we, we should recall the good coordinate axis, then where is the line y equal to 0? It is the x-axis, label it x-axis, the line y equal to 0, shade it. I create a raised surface and a shiny surface. I plot my coordinates of the object. Remember, one of them is I, which is 1, 0, and one of them is J. They are at the same distance, one unit, one unit, and the other one is J, which is 0, 1, J. Now, these two should be reflected through that mirror. They should be reflected through that mirror. The resultant image points will be constituting the matrix of reflection for the line y equal to zero. As simple as that. So, back, slightly back, uh, dear viewers, slightly back to this starting uh, diagram, I want to uh, agree with you that if I shift this object and it comes close to the mirror, if this is now the object, at a distance x, even its image will shift to a distance x behind the mirror. Even the object, the image will shift to a distance x behind the mirror. That means if I move it close, even the image behind the mirror will shift to come close. All of you, wherever you are viewing from, I want you to agree with me that if the object, if this is the mirror and the object is on the mirror, that means by all means even the image will be behind the mirror but at zero distance from the mirror. That is a very crucial concept in this. Very crucial. So coming back here, without much ado, we will agree that the point I, 
which is on the middle line. Our middle line is the x-axis. So the point I, which is on the middle line, its image, I prime, will also be on the middle. Straightforward. And the point J, which is at a distance, this point J for it, it is at a distance one unit from the middle. That means if this is the middle, it is now horizontal. If this is the middle, it means we are going to have a J prime also behind the middle. This is the uh, shiny surface, this is the object, so its image should be behind the mirror, but at the same distance. Don't forget, the distance is one unit. One unit, even behind the mirror, it should be one unit, then we locate J prime. Then we locate J prime. Then we locate J prime, but its coordinates we should discuss together. Uh, J has been on the side of the y axis, on the positive side of the y axis, and J prime is on the negative side of the y axis, but on the axis. So this will be zero, but on the negative side, meaning this is negative one. So we have the images. Now we can deduce the matrix of reflection. So the matrix of reflection in this line here will be I prime and J prime. I prime is one zero, J prime is zero, negative one. So class, when you come to our designated table here, when you come to our table here, we can now write in the matrix of reflection in the x-axis, which will be one, zero, and zero, negative one, in that pattern. Similarly to the to the other case, to the other case where the mirror line having now given a group, we can go through it very fast. The mirror line is x equal to zero. This is the y-axis. This is the y-axis. Uh, the y-axis is the line x equal to zero. Is the mirror. So we we'll have I, which is one zero, and J. So this time round, if you're careful, J is on the mirror, meaning J prime will not shift. It will remain the same coordinate as seen before. But now this time round, uh, our our I our I is at a distance one unit from the mirror of coordinate one zero. It should similarly be behind the mirror at the same distance of one unit, of one unit. Coordinates, now we have gone to the negative side of the x-axis. If this is one zero, then this becomes negative one zero. So the matrix of the images, i prime, j prime, will be given by i prime is here, it's negative one zero. j prime is the same as j y. The object has been on the mirror. This is zero one. So in our uh, table here, the matrix, as you have it in the notes, the matrix of reflection in the y-axis becomes negative one zero, and then zero one. In that order, I'm doing for you uh, the last one. Then you generate for me the matrix of reflection in the y equal to x. Let me perform the um, matrix of reflection in y equal to negative x. Uh, now, for the line y equal to negative x, such lines, we do not know their paths. Unlike, we would easily tell where the y-axis, x-axis uh, pass, and it was easy to draw them. But for such a line, we have to employ, we we'll have to employ a table of results. We we'll have to employ a table of results, and in this table, uh, feel free to impose in any, any three coordinates using x. You can use negative one, zero, one, two, zero, negative two, n. To help you see the path of that line. 
So when x is negative 1, uh, you notice that y will be uh, negative into negative 1, which gives me y as 1. Uh, when x is 0, I get negative into a 0. Your only point and complete the y using the line. Uh, when x is 1, that is negative into 1, that is y as negative 1. So coordinates are negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and, and 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 1. Now those points or coordinates will help us draw the line before we reflect. So uh, the middle line, the middle line y equal to negative x, the middle line y equal to negative x uh, will be this way. I will have 0, 0, then 1, and negative 1. Then negative 1. So 0, 0 is a coordinate. The first one is negative 1 corresponding to 1. So when you are careful, you plot that point. Then 0, 0, you plot that point. Then 1 corresponding to 1 corresponding to negative 1. You also plot that point. Uh, by the time you plot the three points, ensure one of them is negative, another is positive. And if you look at it is easy for you to see the line. So uh, when you're careful through those points, you're able to show how the line moves, which line uh, is labeled as y equal to negative x. It's our middle line. Don't forget the standard objects. I is 1, 0, and J is 0, 1. They are the ones we must reflect. So plotting i, i is 1, 0, and then j is 0, 1, and then j, which is 0, 1. Now those two points should be reflected through the middle line. When you look at where the points are, it communicates to me that the grizzly surface should be on the opposite side of the points. So dropping a perpendicular, remember reflection occurs with the perpendiculars, dropping a perpendicular to that mirror like that shows me how the reflection will occur, dropping a perpendicular like that. Now, this distance, whatever distance it is, you may not be sure, it should be the same distance behind the mirror to reach its image. This is the object J, its distance A from the mirror should be the same perpendicular distance behind the mirror to reach its image. And the image of J, J prime, the image of J, which is J prime, is this point here, which is negative 1, 0. Why am I saying negative 1, 0? J, through the line, it is reflected on the x-axis, onto the x-axis. Now, I, which has been on the x-axis, by the end of the reflection, if its distance is B, it should be the same distance B behind the mirror, that J, I, rather, will be landing onto the y-axis. It has been on the x-axis, it lands on the y-axis. So this is I prime, which is 0, negative 1. So from that... Uh, I prime, uh, J prime is the matrix of reflection, which is 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, which we perfectly transfer to our table here as 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. Uh, dear candidates, that process, that process, you expected to do it, you expected to do that process. Uh, whenever you ask it to use that line in a transformation. The moment you have a matrix, the other process remains constant as we used to do it 
in the previous cases, matrix of transformation times the object matrix leads you to the image matrix. So I leave you with that uh, an complete line you practice and also go through the others concurrently to help you brainstorm the idea and follow the notes as we have them on the website. I will do for you another tutorial to guide you as regards uh, the graphs of transformations. Thanks for watching.